Welcome to part 3 in our Photoshop tutorial. In this part we're going to go over designing the featured area. The first thing to do is hold control and light, sorry, left click on the shape layer that we created before, the rounded corner. Create a new layer. Go to select, modify and contract by 15 pixels. This reduces the area by 15 pixels. And fill this in with a green color which I have already here. Deselect that. Next thing to do, delete everything which is underneath this small gray bar. So that lines up. Next thing, we want to have rounded corners on the top here. See how it's completely jagged straight corners. So to do that, open up rounded rectangle tool. Fixed size 970 pixels wide for the 15 pixels on either side. Play this, place this in line. Next thing, go back onto your rectangle layer here and delete the top section. Go back onto the rounded rectangle layer, go to select, sorry, go to layer, rasterize shape, then press Ctrl and E to merge the layers. And there we have one single layer. Go to layer style, blending options, let's add a little bit of a gradient overlay. Same sort of process as usual. Let's try 10%, add a 1 pixel stroke inside, make this a slightly darker green color. There we have the background for our featured area. Next thing I want to do is add a slightly darker bar down at the bottom to hold some data like um, category, date things like that. So to do that, select the layer, new layer, with the outline of the full layer here selected. Hold Alt and eliminate part of this outline. So you have a rectangle at the bottom. Select and fill this in with black. Blending options, set the blend mode to darken and 7%. The next thing to do is the shadow which is going to go underneath the featured area. We could do a standard drop shadow but for demonstration purposes let's try an elliptical shadow so the shadow is deeper in the middle than the sides. To do this, leave about 15 pixels on either side of the green area and make a shape like so. Go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur, press OK and set this to about 9 pixels. Using the rectangle tool again, select the top half of the shadow and delete. Reposition the shadow so it's directly underneath the featured area. Then go into blending options and reduce the opacity to around 30%. We can also make it slightly less deep. And that looks it. Probably. That looks about right. The next thing we'll do is add the text to the title. So let's set the font to Museo Sans. 
it get bigger and color white this obviously adds a one pixel drop shadow blend mode normal and make it a dark green Next, in order to make the text stand out even more, let's try a little thing I like to do. Get the outline of the whole shape. Create a new layer. And select an area strip, which is going to act as a background for the title. Select about the half the width. Make sure it's on a new layer and fill this in with black. Make sure this is below the text. Let's go into layer style, blending options. Remove the fill and add a gradient overlay. Make both color anchors black. But make the second opacity zero. Set to overlay and reduce the opacity to around 20%. That should be it for our title. Next thing to do show the guides. We want to have text in the, let's say, the second two thirds, so this column and sorry, this column and this column are gonna hold the text, whereas this column here is gonna hold just a simple just a simple thumbnail. Let's actually make it three quarters and one quarter. So the thumbnail will go in here and this will be taken up by all the text. In order to get dummy text, the best thing to do is go to a website lipsum.com generate a number of paragraphs however much you want and copy these so I'll copy that using the grid create a new text layer paste the text and change the font to Arial 12 no. Also change the color to a light green so it didn't quite stand out as much. And also make sure your line spacing isn't too high like I have here. That should fit nicely. Next thing to do is the thumbnail layer, which is going to be here. First thing to do, rectangle outline. Select the area like so. Create a new layer. And fill this in with white. and add a one pixel border to this this is going to be the background for our thumbnail image so save that now we're going to have to get an image for this thumbnail here for this example I'll just use something from the window sample pictures Sample this koala bear. So select the whole image, close that, copy, paste the image, and resize that. Hold shift in order to keep the image proportional. Place that. Over the white background. Now you go on to the white background, get the outline, 
going to select modify contract by three pixels this time and make sure you're on the layer with the koala bear and uh, go into select inverse and delete and there we have a three pixel border effect next thing we're going to have to do is add in um, some details here along with some icons so for this I'm going to start with category so I've already got this loaded here a category icon copy that paste I don't want this color here though so the way to make it black and white or just white in this case is going to color overlay and set it to white pretty simple do the same for comments and finally the clock you may notice the clock is slightly bigger these icons are 16 pixels by 16 pixels I believe the clock is maybe 24 pixels so copy the clock anyway press control and T to transform and change the width here so set this to 16 pixels, height 16 pixels so it's the same height and width as the other images go to blending options and again white overlay there we have our icons, next for the simple text And some sample details line up the icons again don't worry too much about the spacing If it helps you, you should try and get into the habit of naming your layers. Uh, I, I never really bothered to do this, but for other people it seems to be helpful. Next thing, for these, the example category and five comments, these are probably going to be links. So let's go into our text and change this to add an underline. And remove the guides. And uh, we should have pretty nice looking feature there. The one thing it's lacking at the moment is next and previous buttons, which I'll go ahead and do now. So to do this, open up the rendered rectangle tool and we'll add a, an area here to hold the arrows. So unconstrained. rasterize this shape that looks about right go into blending options first thing to do add the drop shadow to the top reduce the size and the distance slightly and lower the opacity I'm also going to delete from here. Go back into blending options. Make sure the gradient is a gray on the top and completely white at the bottom. Now 
and add a one pixel stroke. You can leave it as uh, outside this time. Next thing is to remove the shadow underneath the button. See how it doesn't quite link up here? So if we find our shadow layer here, shape 4 on mine. Select this area and delete. Next thing we're going to do is add the previous and next arrows to this button. So, custom shape tool, select the arrow, take your pick, hold shift when you're creating these, make them proportional size. Make sure they're on the top. Go into layer style, binding options. We're going to add a similar effect to the admin button up here. So fill it in with the same color. Go at inner glow, darken, black. Change the size to about two, two pixels, and lower the opacity quite a lot. And I also add a one pixel stroke, which is lighter. Nice little tip is to select the color, which is the bottom of the arrow. See how it's darker at the top, but lighter at the bottom. If you hold, if you select the color, which is at the bottom, the bar is only going to show up on the top side. That should be fine. Looks good. Reposition, then go into layer, duplicate, edit, transform path, and flip horizontally. Don't worry about the spacing too much, but here we have our pretty nice featured area with previous and next buttons. It should be it for this tutorial. Uh, visit back next time when we'll go over the main content. We'll maybe create some effects here and create the sidebar as well possibly. Thanks for watching. If you want further downloads or you want some written instructions, please go to the website screencasttutorials.com. Again, thanks for watching.